Hi, everyone. I can't see you, but you can see me. Uh, Hi. 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 Uh, so, I am not a student of SVA. Uh, I'm a student of NYC Salt, a nonprofit organization in Manhattan that teaches uh, high school students photography. So I joined that program when I was in 20, when I was in my last year of high school, so 2012. Um, and ever since, I've been a very proactive alumni. Uh, absorbed a lot of the information that they provided to me, not only in photography, but just like personally in my career and all that good stuff. Um, so now it's 2018, so what, it's been six years, I guess. So uh, professionally, I've been shooting now for almost six years, like five years and some change. Uh, events, photo shoots, um, you know, professionally, I've always just wanted to kind of, kind of like develop it to be like an event photographer, because personally, I have like, um, like kind of like a corporate interest as well. So the way I always put it is like creative and corporate. That's kind of the way I divide it up. Um, but over the years, I've you know accomplished a number of things. Uh, fortunately, through NYC Salt and like other opportunities, I've been able to have my pictures in gallery shows uh, in the city and stuff, which a lot of photographers can't really say that they have the opportunity to do so. Um, people bought my prints. Uh, I've gotten awards for it from the Scholastic Awards. Um, also, this is pretty funny. I judged, I judged a photography competition for Congressman Charles Rangel, and as like an award for all the judges, he announced like a day to us. So like May thirteenth is Rami Abomira Day, by the way. So <laughs> is, everyone, put that on your calendar, pretty please. Um, is that just here in New York? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to look in, uh, into that deeper. But there's a hu I have a huge plaque. Um, and then Taryn, my friend from middle school, she actually hi Taryn. Hey. Hi, hi. hey. Uh, she just reminded me that I, uh, the Empire State Building featured my photo um, of their building a while back, and that was nice, just like putting it up on their social media, getting some attention from that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been an interesting ride. I think having a creative outlet, especially when I was in high school, and you know, things are like pretty challenging and anxiety-ridden, especially being in the city, and having that creative outlet is really helpful. Um, so today. Uh, today I'm talking about my recent travels to Europe, so um, to summarize it, I, 13 days, 7 cities, 4 countries, and 40 pictures. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm going to go through today. Can you speak uh, just a little louder? Really? Sure, of course. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so just to repeat the last part, I said uh, 13 days, 7 cities, 4 countries, 40 pictures. So I'm starting in Italy, I'm starting in Milan, um, and this arc here, if you probably recognize it, it, looks similar to the one in Washington Square Park, uh, but they have them all over Europe. Actually, this one, if you go straight, if you look straight through it, it's supposed to go all the way to France, to the arc that's in France. It's supposed to be perfectly in line with it. That was pretty cool. I thought that was interesting. Um, and then this is like this huge, 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 huge castle. It's uh, Sforza Castle that was like beautifully maintained by the Milanese uh, government. They've been maintaining it for centuries. And th this is a huge moat where the grass is. You know, that's where the moat was. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, the you can't even, you really just can't even capture it with your own eyesight. It's just a huge, huge castle. Um, now, this one I wanted to focus on a little bit. Does anyone? I'm just curious. Does anyone have any idea what this symbol is? Has anyone seen it before? Okay, so <clears throat> it has a pretty interesting history. Um, so it belonged to, um, it, it's, it's weird, it belonged to a number of families and uh, groups of people over time, but it originated in Milan. And the symbol um, belonged to the House of Visconti, who controlled the city of Milan from the 13th to the 15th century. Um, and this is during the Crusades. So you see a snake, and then you see a baby being eaten by the snake, right? A red baby. And you see this symbol not only in the castle, but you see it on churches, you see it in restaurants, you see it uh, on actually like logos of modern companies today in Italy. Um, you see it everywhere. What does this baby represent? The baby actually represents Muslims during that time, so it was dedicated to just eating Muslims, <laughs> uh, which I thought was really interesting. It was really mind-boggling when the tour guide said it. He was just like, yeah, 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 that, that's, a, that's a baby, but that baby represents all Muslims. And he just said it very casually because, you know, he's a tour guide. And I was like, what? What? Like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, 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 I'm sure. 
And it was weird, you know, because like you would imagine like that's something similar to here, like maybe the Confederate flag or something like that. But it's different though, because like I was talking to Milanese people and they didn't really like it's not like they were like uh, an antagonizing Muslims on the day to day. This is just something that's been there for hundreds of years. To them, it's just a symbol of their culture. It's not a symbol of their hatred. So, but to me, it was very interesting. My, I'm 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 Egyptian American. Um, my family's Muslim. I'm not really that religious, but obviously it's still part of my identity. So it was just, it was like an interesting thing to experience and um, I was never aware of it. I'm just gonna go through some more pictures um, from Milan. Um, quick thing about this picture, I waited 45 minutes for this train to pass by because uh, they have trams in the street, um, uh, not like here, but um, it was nighttime, I'm traveling, why not? What else do I got to do, right? So this is called the Navi Navi eh, Naviglio Grande, so this is just like the canal. In, Mil in Milan, and it's really beautiful. They have restaurants there on the side. It's kind of shady at night, but what, what place isn't shady at night, really? Um, yeah, it's beautiful. So now I went to another region. This is called Lake Como. Uh, you might be familiar. I, you know, when I was on the tour, they were like, oh, Ocean's Eleven was filmed here, Ocean's Eleven was filmed here. You know, it's like the thing that they kept mentioning over and over again. But it's a really, really beautiful town. Gorgeous, like unbelievable. And I went on a gorgeous day, like the sun was just like, I, I went on a cruise ship and I went on the cruise ship during golden hour. So, I mean, sorry, not cruise ship, it was like a boat ride, it wasn't a huge cruise. Um, but it was like unbelievable. So you can see, I mean, this looks extremely yellow to me, but um, you can tell that there's like golden hour sun like hitting everything. And that's just how it was. It was just gorgeous. So just a quick thing about this one actually. So. Um, this is like a perfectly set projector that's like meant to at night during Christmas time go on these buildings and perfectly illuminate certain spots on the buildings and they did you know they, they do Christmas way better than we do Christmas here it's crazy it's unbelievable so they have like you know these lights that are like shining on all these buildings and churches and it's so pretty and you know Christmas markets and all this stuff so in every city that I visited I went to a Christmas market there so within 13 days I saw like seven Christmas markets, and it was really, um, I'll talk more about it later. It was really interesting. When here it says, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, just like, you know, any traveler, you meet people, right? So you go up to them and say, hey, what, what's your life like? You know, I'm not from here. Um, so this is, she's from Russia, and she, uh, she's, she, she left to Milan because her boyfriend pissed her off, so she literally just hopped on a train and was like, I'm going to Milan. And we met in the, the same hostel, and we started talking, and then before I knew it, we were just going out, and we were just shooting together. So, you know, we did a whole photo shoot, a couple hours, and this was actually my last few hours in Europe. So I just happened to meet her, and then it just happened. Uh, we took some really amazing shots together. And this is just such a, like, a European picture. So now I'm in Switzerland. Uh, red and white. Very Swiss. Very clean. Uh, the train stations in Europe are just, like, MTA got to step it up. MTA is not doing it right. 
I'm sure you guys heard about the monsoon that happened yesterday. Um, it doesn't happen in Europe. Their drains are clean. Yeah. Are they all dirty and filthy? Um, you know, beautiful Swiss Alps. Um, it was really gorgeous. I didn't get to ski over there. I mean, that would have been kind of crazy. I, I don't think I would have been ready. But Switzerland's beautiful. Yeah, so they totally do Christmas markets just way better than we do. Um, it's just the energy is completely different in here. Completely different. I don't even celebrate Christmas. <laughs> and I love, um, the one thing that I really love about basically every city I visit is how how castles are beautifully integrated into the city. Um, you know, we have churches here, we have old structures here, but not like how they have it, you know? I mean, this this is a wall. Like, it's a, the, the castle is, you know, it's an actual wall. And um, it was used, you know, throughout history for different purposes. Um, let's see. So you see this right here? This is a hotel that oversees the whole city. I just want to point that out so you can see um, where I'm looking from for, for an another picture. Which city is that? Oh, sorry. This is um, in Switzerland, but not in... Uh, sorry, sorry. In Switzerland, I visited two cities. I visited uh, uh, Zurich, and I visited Lucerne. Um, Zurich is very businessy, very, very businessy. Like, th you're not going to go there for fun. You're going to go there for a business trip or to, like, raise your family or something. Lucerne is cool, like it's a little bit more fun touristy. Um, I preferred, I, I thought Lucerne was beautiful. I thought Lucerne was really cool. This is Lucerne. Uh, they have like this like, to them it's like, you know, one of their best landmarks in the city where they have like this bridge that just crosses over the water, but it's kind of like a diagonal. Um, but it's really beautiful. People obviously just like hang out there. They have like a gift shop in the middle of it. Um, but it's the city's landmark. So that hotel I pointed at, this is uh, looking down. This is a black and white photo. This is not sepia or anything. Um, it's a projector. But um, yeah, I just had to really show how clean the subways are. It's unbelievable. Um, so now I'm in Germany. So I went to two cities in Germany. I went to uh, Nuremberg, and then I also went to Cologne. Um, Nuremberg, I didn't know this, but Nuremberg was completely destroyed during World War II, pretty much, like 90-something percent of the city was completely destroyed. Obviously, that meant a lot of people died as well, unfortunately. Um, and what I thought was really just, it's not, you know, I wanted to word this correctly. Um, but as a result of that, they were able to build a lot of new infrastructure. So their infrastructure today is very modern. So they might have replicated a lot of the old castles and the old look of things, but the structures and the architecture itself is very modern from like the 50s and onwards. So the trains are clean, the trains run smoothly, the buildings have good piping and all that stuff. Um, so this, the, everything just kind of runs better. And because you know they just built in the 50s, like the subway system here is like what, 200 years old, 100 years old? Something like that? A hundred, not two hundred. <laughs> Feels like it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still in Nuremberg now. Um, so this here is where I stayed. Um, the beautiful thing about Europe is that hostels are literally 40 euros, which is like 50 bucks a night. And I stayed in this castle for a night. Um, it was subsidized by the government. It was very cheap and affordable, but it's gorgeous in, on the inside. Gorgeous. Um, I'm standing on top, on top of a parking lot here, and this is pretty much just like the Christmas market or part of it. I just thought this was funny. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. 
statue looking up. Mm -hmm. I just like the angle of it. So, again, this is in Nuremberg. They're actually very well known for their um, their Christmas market there. Um, and this is the busiest, like, you know, to you, I mean, I feel like if I were just looking at this and had no context on the other markets that I saw, this would be like a whatever New York City picture. But the other markets were not as busy as this. Like, this market was like, you couldn't even walk through it, you know? Like, it was just so many people from all around the world just coming to see this specific one in Nuremberg. Uh, it was the, easily the most busiest and best one that I went to. That's the first one, actually, also. The first one, like, period? Yeah. There they you go. It, they invented it there, and from there it spread out. Then. There you go. Makes sense. It's beautiful. It's a, it was a good time. And again, just like, you know, meeting people and just, you know, this person, it's crazy. I, like, was going to go get breakfast, and then you ask one question, and then before you know it, you're spending six hours in the day with them, <laughs> and you're just traveling, and you're just, like, learning about what they do and, like, who they are. And it's just, like, a very eye-opening experience. So this one, I also, I just want to kind of preface when I, I'm going to describe this one. This has to do with uh, Adolf Hitler. So I'm sorry if it offends anyone. I'm sorry if it upsets anyone. But I'm just going to discuss it anyway. Um, so this structure that you can tell is kind of um, falling apart. They're not really taking care of it. Um, you know, this is nighttime. There's no... It's not in the middle of the city. This is a kind of in the outskirts near a stadium. They purposely left it out of the city, but kind of just there. So this is actually right here. This is where Adolf Hitler used to stand to give his uh, speeches to like his larger audience, um, you know, the, the people that followed him. And uh, it's a pretty powerful, um, you know, structure. It's just, it's kind of sad to walk past it and just, you know, like look at that and be like, this is where this guy like rallied people to make them do terrible things, you know? And um, I guess the reason why I wanted to include it in, in, in my um, slideshow today is just to kind of uh, remind us that these are all just different points in history where as, at a certain point, one group of people are decided to be the scapegoat and throughout history that keeps changing. Um, so just keeping that in mind and just current events, I, I, thought, I, I felt like that was important. And also ties in with uh, a project that I'm working on that I'll explain a little bit later. Um, but yeah, you know, like, the, the German government doesn't like endorse this at all. They're, you know, this, this used to be like very glorified. It was shiny, had a big old swastika on the top of it. They ripped that down. You know, they, they're not supporting it at all. They just keep it there so that people know what it was, you know? So now, now I'm in Cologne. This is another city in uh, Germany. It's pronounced Cologne, but I can never say it right because it's like a weird sound, but it's Cologne. Uh, yeah, there you go. See this guy? He's, he's, he's here for me. He got my back. Um, but yeah, this is uh, uh, the, the big cathedral in the city, and it's just like, I couldn't even capture it with a 16 millimeter lens. Like, it, that's, you know, it was just so huge. So huge. Um, but I just figured I'd get a little close up, you know, like get some of the details and just really illuminate it and really like, you know, um, make it pop because the details are crazy. So now I'm in Amsterdam. Now, what else makes sense than an Italian in Amsterdam doing this pose? What, what do you guys think he was doing in Amsterdam that made him feel so comfortable to do this pose? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so, yeah, Amsterdam's a fun place. <laughs> uh, very fun place. But I had to include him, you know? Because it's just, what else, what else is better than that? So this is the main station in Amsterdam, so when you get out of the train, um, it's, it's this building here. Mm. 
This is just such an Amsterdam picture. Cafe, bikes on, on the canal, dark. So yeah, so that's my slideshow. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, but just a couple things if I haven't gone over too much, I hopefully I have not. Um, okay, sounds good. So quickly, so what's next? You know, this is a travel thing. You know, what am I gonna do with it? Why do I care about it? Um, why did I include certain images that I included? So I recently actually just came back from Colorado. I just came back from Denver at 5 a.m. today. Um, and uh, came back with a gift. Uh, that's a cast or a brace, a uh, ski accident, but all is well. So I'm gonna have some pictures from that too and continue traveling, but also I kind of uh, alluded to this earlier, just talking about the you know, uh, persecution and kind of being interrogated through society. So I'm actually working on a uh, video series um, that I'll be interviewing Muslim Americans and asking them about their identity and what it means to them. So, um, you know, I've recruited a Huffington Post reporter, a comedian, uh, kind of like an aspiring artist that's a bit younger, um, and I'm looking into bringing some other people, but I'll basically I'll be interviewing them through video, um, and I'll be displaying it at the NYC Salt Gallery Show um, in June. So, yeah, keep an eye open. Um, I'll be out here. Thank you guys so much. Any questions? What's your favorite city on your tour? Favorite city? Whew, that's a tough one. Um, the German food was super good. <laughs> super duper good. Um, yeah, I'd probably have to say Germany. I don't know, I just found it really interesting, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it's just so hard because Lake Como is beautiful, Amsterdam is fun, like it's just, it, like there's benefits to every city. Good question though, thank you. Uh, where are you traveling to next? Where am I traveling to next? <laughs> uh, I was actually gonna go back to Europe in June or July, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I might be going to Egypt um, in December. No, you should go to Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, photos will be better. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Thank you everyone for listening, appreciate it, thank you.